Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today I'll show you three quick tips to speed up gameplay in Roll20. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So our first tip is going to let us navigate between the different layers of Roll20 much faster. So instead of going over to this toolbar and selecting which layer we want to jump to, we'll be able to just press a single key on the keyboard to move to that specific layer. To set that up, we're going to go over to the gear icon in our game, and we're going to select Keyboard Shortcuts, and check this Use Advanced Keyboard Shortcuts. And now with that done, we'll be able to press the M key to jump to the map layer, the K key to go to the GM layer, the comma to go to the dynamic lighting layer, and O to go back to the objects and tokens layer. So that'll speed up your navigation during gameplay. Now let's talk about speeding up combat. In an in-person game, one of the things that's often recommended is to have your players roll their attacks and damage simultaneously so that it doesn't take up extra time at the table. Well, we can do that in Roll20 as well, so let's see how it works. So what you want to do is go to your game's settings page and scroll down to this auto damage roll section and you want to set that so that it says auto roll damage and crit and then scroll down and save your changes. So what this means now is anytime I add a new creature from the compendium into my game that creature's attacks will automatically roll damage as well. So in the case of this kobold, let's alt double click to open up his character sheet and let's attack with the sling. And you can see now that we are automatically rolling both the attack and the damage and that's just going to speed up gameplay a little bit more. Now the thing to know about this is that setting we just enabled on the game settings page will only apply to new creatures and new characters that get added to the game. For your existing characters, there's a tweak you need to make on their character sheet in order to auto roll damage. So let's see how to do that. What you want to do is go to your character sheet. So I'm going to go to All Rush here. I'm going to Alt double click on him to open up his character sheet. I'm going to go over to the cog here. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to auto damage roll. And it's the same setting here. We're going to set that to be auto roll damage and crit. So now if we go back to the core tab and have All Rush make an attack, you can see that we're rolling both the attack and the damage simultaneously. Now there's one other tweak that we can do to speed up damage rolls. Sometimes you'll have an NPC or a monster like this Warlock of the Great Old One who has this Howling Void ability. And as you can see in here, this says that on a failed save, the creature takes 9 or 2d8 psychic damage. Now, if you don't want to use the average and you actually want to roll the 2d8, you would have to then type in slash r2d8, roll it, and then get the roll. But what we can do is actually edit the character sheet here so that it automatically does a roll for us. So what I'm going to do is click on the cog for the Howling Void entry, and I'm going to change this line right here. Instead of having it be the average and parentheses 2d8, what I'm going to change that to is two open brackets, 2d8, and two closing brackets. And we'll save that. And now when we roll Howling Void a second time, you can see that we actually rolled 2d8, and we have that rolled damage automatically displayed here in the template. Now our final tip is going to be setting up buttons for commonly used actions like attacks and spells and saves. And this way you won't have to open up each monster's character sheet in order to perform an action. Now there are two different ways we can approach this. I'm going to show you both of them, so buckle up, here we go. So the first thing we want to do is open up the character sheet that has the actions we want to make buttons for. So I've opened up my Warlock here. And let's do his Howling Void attack. So I'm going to click on Howling Void and I'm going to click and hold and drag it down to the bottom of the screen to this area where it says add roll to macro quick bar. And when you see this light gray area pop up, let go. And now that adds the button down here to this toolbar. And we can right click on it to rename it. I could say Howling Void, click OK. And then we can also right click on this to color it. So if we wanted to give the Warlocks button, say red, and another creature's buttons would be blue, we can do that. And this is kind of nice because you can have multiple creatures actions down there in the bar. So let's bring up our kobold here. I can put the kobold's sling attack down there and I can do the same thing, rename it, sling, 
and I can color it, maybe I want the kobold to be blue, and, and so on. So now if a fight breaks out in the bar and my kobold wants to use its sling, I don't have to open its character sheet, I don't have to select its token, all I have to do is click the sling, and we've made the attack and the damage. Same thing for the warlock. One final thing to mention about this toolbar is how you remove items from it. So, what you want to do is move to the right of the button, and you'll see that the cursor changes into this little move icon. You can use that to reorder the buttons, but if you want to remove something completely, what you want to do is get the move icon showing, and then drag the button up and off the toolbar, and that will remove it for you. The other way to approach this is to create token actions for your characters, and the token actions are those buttons that you see in the top left of the screen. So let's see how we can set those up. So the first thing we want to do is open up our character sheet. We'll just alt double click on our character's token here. This is Larissa, my great old one warlock, and she is always casting Eldritch Blast. So let's go ahead, let's run Eldritch Blast. There we go. And now what we want to do is go into the chat menu here. We're going to press up on the keyboard. And you see that just populated with a whole bunch of stuff. This is the actual code that Roll20 runs in order for Larissa to cast that Eldritch Blast. So I'm going to Control A, Control C to copy it. And then I'm going to go into Attributes and Abilities on her character sheet and say Add an Ability. We're going to call this ability Eldritch Blast. And then I'm just going to paste in that stuff that we copied from the chat. And we don't really need to know anything about what this is doing. We just need to copy the whole thing and then click this little check mark here and then say show as token action. And now when we close the character sheet and I select Larissa's token again, you notice she now has an Eldritch Blast button and if she clicks it, there we go, we've just rolled Eldritch Blast. Now the thing about the toolbar and the token actions is it does take a little while to set them up. So if you have a pro account, there is a script you can use to automatically generate the token actions for you. That script is called Token Action Maker, and it was written by Keith Curtis, Kevin, and Brett. Thank you guys very much for making this. This is a wonderful script. It's one of the ones that I always include in all my games. So I've just added that script into my game, and now if I go back into my game and I select someone, so let's say I select our kobold here, I can type in exclamation point TA and press enter. And you'll notice now we created 5e token actions for our kobold. And now when I click on my kobold's token, he has everything that he can do. He's got his daggers, both for melee and ranged. We've got checks, so this will let him make any type of ability check that we want. His saves. And then some notes about some of his other powers, like what pack tactics are and sunlight sensitivity. So that script really speeds things up. Thank you again to Keith Curtis, Kevin, and Brett for building it. Again, you do need a pro account in order to use that. So there you have it. Three ways that you can speed up gameplay in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And I also just want to give a quick shout out of thanks to all my patrons. All your support really does mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching, folks, and have a great day.